This meeting is being recorded. All right, click Floss in full in. Yeah, what we what we what we're talking about today is we're not we're not um, we're talking about the, the fall of the Commonwealth and we're talking about what's happening in our part of New Zealand. These same things are happening in England, Scotland, Ireland, and Australia, because they're bringing down the Commonwealth. That's what they're doing. And they just, they, their way of destroying the Commonwealth is through the native people and the division of, of all of our people. Now, I'm not here to say who's right and who's wrong, but I've just got my friend on here. And all what we're doing is looking at the laws that are, that are available and what our, um, in, in New Zealand, they call it whakapapa. What is our lineage of law that we have come from? Where have we come from? And we've got many people that are focused on one law. Sometimes they're not even focused on one law. They're focused on one paragraph of law. And then they ignore all the rest at their peril. Now, I'm not saying that the rest are right or wrong. But what I'm saying is that um, we, we, we need to just know what they are. So you know what your lineage of law is for your country. And now, ours is very different from America. So what um, brought us to this was this question here. This is what this guy says. And so I'll go to share screen so that everybody knows the question that we were addressed with. All right, so we were addressed with this question here which says, um, uh, Billy Winter, it is the NZBORA 90, section three designates as a minimum that as pursuant to law, as gifted by a king, that Takara, which is the New Zealand Maori flag that they claim, is an enactment. So he's saying that um, section three of the New Zealand Bill of Rights designates at a minimum that pursuant to law as gifted by a king that Takara is an enactment. So he's saying that the gift of the flag was an enactment by the king, All right? So then I want to go and show you um, what section three, because I said to, can, am I allowed to say your name? Lulu, right. What I said to Lulu. Lee, I don't hey? know why it says Lulu W. I've got, oh, Lulu W. I know who that is. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. I'll just call you Lulu. All right, what I've said to Lulu, can I call you Lulu? Is that offensive? No, no, just call me Lee. All right, Lou. So, oh, oh oops. Um, I went to the wrong one. So um, what I've said to Lou is Lee. that, Get it right. What do you want Lee. me to call you? Lee. Lee is my name. Can I just call you Billy? Yeah, call me Billy. All oh, right, Billy. Right. What I said to Billy, right? Her name is Billy. Right. Oh. Ah, it's out now. Oh, it's out. out. It's, oh, it's out. Yeah. Okay. I'm out. Yeah. Cat's out the bag. Right. Yeah. So what I said to Billy is that um, we. I said to Billy, do you know what Section Three of the 1990 Act? says and Billy said I don't know what it says so I said well if you don't know that then we have to go and look at all the things and what we've decided is that we're just going to make a video and go around the various laws that you're all working within and just show you and we're not making any decisions of who's right or who's wrong or anything we're just going to show you what's there and uh, so I'll go to the window Oh, hang on. Turn that off. Right, so what I wanted to... Right, can you see my screen there, Billy? Yep. Right. So that we went and looked at the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act. And so England, England and Ireland, you've all, all got these in Australia as well. So let's just look at all the things that you've got to be looking at. Um, we don't work in subordinate laws for a start. I only work in constitutional laws. 
and I'm not interested in any subordinate laws, no matter which team it comes from. I'm only interested in the constitutional laws. Now, this is called New Zealand Bill of Rights Act. And the minute that you see the word act, it means that it's a subordinate law. And they're trying to claim that it's a constitutional law when it isn't and it never was. It's listed as an ordinary law. And there's a whole other story about this. But you can see here that it says New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990. Now we've got another Bill of Rights. What you'll see here is it says Bill of Rights 1688, but also this is called an Imperial Act 2. So it's called Imperial Act 2, but what you'll notice on there is that it doesn't say New Zealand. And I, the, re, the only reason why I use this one, I use this one because it's easier to read, right? So that's the only reason that I use it. But where does you, then you have to ask, where does this come from? And so this comes from the crown law. And you can see the crown law here, and it's got the lion and it's got the unicorn, right? And you'll see here that these laws here are exactly the same. That you see here that it is the right of the subjects to petition the king and all commitments and prosecutions for such petitioning are illegal. You see that there? And it's in here that it uses the word king. And any time that they make a subordinate law that's repugnant to the king, then you are able to go and petition against it. So I'm assuming that that's what he's talking about when he says section three designates at a minimum, minimum that as pursuant to the law as gifted by a king, that the Takara is an enactment. Takara, I'm just going to call that the Maori flag for, want, so for understanding for other people, right? So I'll call it the Maori flag. The Maori flag, I've got one here, is a St. George cross and it, they're using an eight point star, which I dispute, but that's not the what we're talking about today. But never mind, they're using this other flag. And that's what he's probably talking about when he says that the enactment, when the king gave the flag, included in the flag, it's the laws of the country that are bound inside the flag. Whoever's flag is on the left-hand side that you can see here, here on the left-hand side, that's called the canton. And what you have on the right side is your country. And if you go and look at the coordinates of those stars, it shows the coordinates of the Pacific area. And when you see this canton here, um, the laws that the country is governed by rests in its canton. And that's why they're saying that they've got in, in their left-hand canton is the St. George's Cross. And see, this here is also the St. George's Cross. You'll see that that cross down there is the St. George's. And then I can't remember which one it is. One of the reds applies to Scotland or the white, it applies to Scotland and Ireland, which were added later, but the red St. George is right there in the middle with the other ones joined on. And that became that Union Jet, that's actually called the um, United Kingdom, that canton. And in all laws, as you see, uh, can you still see my screen? Yeah. So all laws are rested in the king of Prince, uh, the Prince and Princess of Orange that became king. And all of that is rested in these laws, the king's law. So that's why he's saying what he's saying, but I'm going to show you his deception. Now, so you can see here that in theirs, they've got the, this is the New Zealand, this is the crown in the middle. All right, yeah. who knows who she is? That's Lady Justice there, and that's the Maori chief. That's apparently, that's not even the queen. So 
that's just Lady Justice there and him sitting there. So I think, but I'm not sure, but if I can find the um, one that I want to look for, I should have looked for it before it came on. But if you go to... Um, Hang on, just go to, oh, I'll just, um, oh, it's already up there, so it doesn't matter. Just, oh, I'll just stop the share for a minute. Oh, no. This meeting is being recorded. Yeah. All right, hang on. I've just got to find this thing below so it's not on the screen. I hope I've got it right. No, not that one. Hang on, just be could be patient with me, Billy. Oh, I'm patient. You'll have to be very patient. Hang on. I've got to find it because I hope that I'm right. I'll have to stop if I'm wrong. Oh, is it, it's recording, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, but it's not on the screen. All right. I had one. Ah, okay. So, all right, and then I'll go to my one of my family so that you all know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, now I'll find this little bit here. All right, so we're on record, right? I'm going to go to share screen. So we'll go back to um, here. Right. What you'll see here is you see the Lady Justice there, right? And then you see the Maori Chief. And that is the New Zealand Bill of Rights 1990 Act. And then you'll see the Bill of Rights 1688, and you'll also see that it says Imperial Act 2, right? But there's no, there's New Zealand written here, but there's no New Zealand written down here. And then you'll see here that it says here that you have the right as subjects to petition the king, right? Now, if if you go over to the Bill of Rights UK, you'll see the lion, the crown, and the unicorn. And then what you'll see is that you'll see exactly the same wording, that the subjects, which are Protestants, oh, no, 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 that it is the right of the subjects to petition the king and all commitments and prosecutions for such petitioning are illegal. Now, we have found several of these documents. And if you go to here on these Victoria documents, um, you'll see this is 1849, but my one of my family is 1843. But we've got them from 1841. And you'll see here, there you've got the lion and the unicorn and the crown law is vested. Anything that is in crown law from the king or the Queen will have a stamp like this. Nothing to do with New Zealand. And it's all of theirs, so it's all of them that are vested in the canton of the flag. Whenever you see the canton of the flag, which is right there, when you see the canton of the flag, it's that is the law that's vested in, which comes from here that has been put into New Zealand 
here, all right? And then through that, he is saying, he is saying on section three that uh, section three designates at a minimum that as pursuant to law is gifted by a king that Takara is an enactment. Yes, it is because it is uh, when they when the king gave the flag, he was the king by the St. George's Cross, not the United Kingdom, which is four countries. Only him under the St. George's Cross put you under the protections of this here. All right. So that means, that's what he means by when he's talking about the king. Now, if you go to this naturalization document of the province of New Munster, and your claims are all tied up in this. And you'll see here that it's got number two. Do you see that number two? Now, if you go to here, you're gonna see that is the Imperial Act Number two, and that is bound to this one here. Okay, now this was another one, but this one's for my family. And then here's the Union Bank. And then it will say here that when these people on the St. Paulian, there are many of these, many, many Pakia have got these. Um, it will say here that. Um, they, their disability of as being aliens was removed from them. And we know we've got other documents and I'm not gonna show them to you today, but we've got other documents that show that this was approved by the paramount chiefs of New Zealand at the time through their Maori flag and their covenant with the king. That's how they were able to do it. So when a bunch of after the treaty was signed and a bunch of native Anglo people were brought to New Zealand, the paramount chiefs through their own Takara Maori flag approved of the alien status being removed from the people that were bound up in the New Zealand company. So this is all, there are many other documents. I'm just gonna give you a rudimentary. So then it will show that the persons are all annexed on here. And here they are all here. And all the descendants of those people, there's Lang, these are all German people. All of them are German. And then this is called an ordinance. And when it's called an ordinance, that means royal decree. So this is a royal decree. And then by acknowledging the Takara flag, you in turn acknowledge the St. George. And when you acknowledge the St. George, you acknowledge the King's law. So it's all bound up in there. So in order to get all of these documents here out, you would have to remove that Takara flag. You would have to, because these laws here are royal decrees in the country of New Zealand by the King done under the Takara flag, your flag. So, um, so my name's on here. So this is my great, great, great grandfather, Gottfried George Sixtus. And um, he was 12 years old at the time. So there are five Sixtus brothers. And what we know is that Sue Gray went into my family's website in 2012 and she took those names and she listed only four of the brothers and she removed my great, great, great grandfather from it. Yeah. Yep, so great. Oh, so great. Yes, in 2012. I don't know why she did that. Why was she, um, do you suppose, meddling around in this? Oh, there's, there's a whole lot more that I'm not going to go into today, Billy, but yeah. there's certainly a lot of skullduggery going on around all of this. And um, so then, so let's just stay with what we're doing on the laws. So you see that well, there are actually many of these documents and the Paramount Chiefs have got them also. And so there, that's why you'll hear them saying 
our covenant is with the king. It's nothing to do with New Zealand. But hey, let me tell you something. Mine's with the king as well and nothing to do with New Zealand. I've already submitted mine into the court. So what you'll see here is that when you go to all your Maori laws, all your Maori laws are vested in here, not actually vested in here. But this is just easier to read. So you'll see me using it all the time, but usually you'll see me saying um, Will and Mary because I'm referring to this one. Now, and then if you see um, here, that it says here that you can make any claims brought by Mary relating to legislation or policies or actions or omissions of the Crown that are alleged to breach the promises of the treaty. Well, it's not really anything to do with the treaty. It's got everything to do with this. This is what they're talking about because it was the treaty that made you subjects. And what they, your the groups have gone and done is they've removed the first article and the second article and they only want to look at the, uh, sorry, they've moved the first and third and they only want to look at the second. But whenever they go to the second, they rest that in the Takara flag. Whenever they rest that in the Takara flag, it all, it all comes back to this. It's, it's like you cannot, you cannot, when you, you have a seed, right? You have a seed and you plant the seed and a tree grows. You can rave on all your life that the tree exists without the seed, but it doesn't matter how often you say the tree exists without the seed, the tree cannot exist without the seed. It can't. So that's what you're, those people are trying to say is that this one branch of the tree, the second article of the treaty, is stands alone and it doesn't have any seed or any trunk or any, any branch that, that, that it rests on, which is just not true. So let's go now that we see that. This also comes under the 1908 Declaratory, we're going to be here for a long time, so you might as well get your ass warm. Oh, um, real it's warm. going to be long. So here, because I, I, I have wanted to make this video, actually, so I might as well do it now. So this is called the Declaratory Judgments Act, right? And what you'll see here is, we'll just give an introduction to all and then we'll go back, all right? So I'll just introduce all to you and don't need to take it all in now, but we'll introduce. So this is called the Declaratory Judgments Act. And what you'll see here is that it, it, it doesn't say the word New Zealand also. Can you see that? Unlike this. So it, it is this Declaratory Judgment Act that it says, that any person who wants to look at the validity, legality, or effect, which depends on the construction or validity of any statute or regulation made by the Governor General or any statutory authority, which would include Te Kanga Law Society, Tri Waitangi Tribunal, all of them, any person such as you or me, as long as you come from the old times, you have to have an ancestry. If you don't have an ancestry, you cannot use this. So you have to be, have an ancestry. And I have that. So it says any company or anybody or any instrument, you are permitted to go to the High Court and you are permitted to get a declaration from, you, from them explaining to you what that law is about. And then if you're Maori, you go to here. So it's exactly the same thing. This whole tribunal, we've got it on the, the New Zealand native side, the New Zealand Aboriginal side, and we've got it on the Anglo side as well. We've both got it. And so you can go here, but if you're not even happy here, you're permitted to go to the conventional court as long as 
as long as it is to do with a right. You can use this as long as it's do, to do with the right, but when it comes to land deeds, they will just send you back to here every single time because the Crown doesn't own the land. The Maori own the land. The Crown only owns the law. This is what the Crown owns, all right? Well, the, the king, this is what the king owns. But the Maori owned the land. <laughs> so what they did was, now, if you go to this Declaratory Judgment Act, and what you'll see here. Can I just um, say that that's a very important thing, that, that of, of just what I've been witnessing. The... Crown owns the law and the Māori. Oh, well, that's the because law. that's what they're saying, kawatana, kawatana, and it clearly says in the second article to which you are the sole sovereigns thereof and that we, own the, we do all the laws because all the laws are based in the flag. It doesn't matter which flag you're using, whether you're using the Māori flag with the St George Cross or whether you're using the Union Jack flag with the four New Zealand stars. The fact of the matter is, is that the law of your country rests in the canton and both of those cantons come back to that law that I've just shown you. But so what happened here? One huh? covers eh? the, article one covers the Kawanatanga and article two covers the, the, the chiefs and tribes the lands. families and individuals thereof. Well, here's your so, individual here because there's your, it says here any person. It uses individuals, any person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so this is you as an individual, isn't it? And then what is what is this connected to? Well, this is connected to here, where it says here that you as an individual have got all of these rights. One of them is the forfeiture of a person. You have to study it like I have, but the one is the right to petition to the king. And then what it where what is and then we see here that comes over into here, which gives it to you within the country of New Zealand, which is invested in this. See, these are all invested in each other. You see what I mean? And Hold on a minute, you're um, this is this is your fucker papa of your law that you have. Where are you? Where are your? This is your seed. You, you understand? You're only talking about the twig. I'm talking about the whole tree. Your twig, your twig cannot exist without the seed. It simply can't. It's against nature. So anything that is against nature cannot exist. So if you're going to use the twig, then you have to accept the seed. If you don't want to accept the seed, which I'm not opposed to that, then don't accept the twig. So your twig is here. As you can see here, oh, they're making that, I heard it. So when I try to talk to those people, your group, or not your group, or any group, they, they fluctuate about which one they're going to use, but it really doesn't matter. It is irrelevant. Let's just go to, it doesn't matter which one you use. But they have, here, uh, here in here, it says, here in, here is article two, where it says that you are the sole sovereigns thereof of your territories. That's what it says. And it does say here, the Confederation United Tribes separate and independent chiefs who have not become members 
through Her Majesty. Oh, no, 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 I'm in the wrong place. Her Majesty confirms and guarantees chiefs, one, and tribes, two, and respective families, three, and individuals, four. Now, the individuals doesn't say that they're Maori. It just is basically saying the people that are born to and living in New Zealand at that time. So not everybody's involved with this treaty. If you turned up in New Zealand, um, after, if you turned up in New Zealand post-1865, all of this has nothing to do with you, so you might as well bugger off because you don't have these documents here. So you're not a part of it. I know you want to be a part of it, but I'm oh. sorry, but you're not a part of it. So all That's the people... why he signed off as a... Oh, I can't remember what Benjamin signed off as, but something to do with an alien, perhaps the king hadn't removed his alien status from his ancestors. Um, anybody, the people that got their alien status removed were, have, all, we've found many of these documents, they all have these, and they stopped the removal of alien status in 18, around about 1853, because it was at that time that they were producing nationality through birth certificate. There was a window when they had decided to do the birth certificates. There was a window where they allowed a few of us to come in and remove our alien status only for a certain point of time because the Aboriginal population had dropped to such critical levels that the population was going to be wiped out. So they moved all of us in for a certain point of time to increase enough population and then they cut it off and it was cut off in 1865, that's when it was cut off. Now, so because we've, we've actually got documents of Tamati Wakanene and he was signed up to all of this. So anybody that's come into New Zealand, uh, because you can see here from the 1858, here's another one. Uh, hang on, I'm just trying to find it for you. If you go to the, um, there's the 1865, 1688. Hang on, it just takes me a wee minute. I'll probably Google it. Oh dear, just does take me a wee minute. 1852, 1865, 1808. Where's my 18, ah, here it is. So that's that's the 1844. Here's the 1858. And but also you'll see here, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking. You see here the 1858. You'll also see the Victoria, and this is a royal decree. But At this one, oh, they were removed as aliens as well. In 18, I thought they were not. In 1858, they were also removed as aliens and they were made subjects as well. And then when you go to the 1865, this is the cutoff time. 
then you'll see in the 1865, ah, and you see this is a number two. This is where they took all the Maoris uh, to be deemed to be natural born subjects and to declare that jurisdiction of the Queen's court law extends over the persons and properties of all Her Majesty's subjects. So all the people that were here pre-1865 come under the, this laws here of their properties that they had their alien status removed when they arrived in New Zealand. So they were basically made natives of New Zealand upon arrival under the New Zealand company. And then all of those persons are the ones, they're the only ones that are involved with this treaty and nobody else. So we're all the people that need to be talking together. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Oh, the light's shining in and I can't see you. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, shut the curtain. Yes, that helps. Oh, that's better. All right. So, so that you see there that at 1865, it says, um, because we actually had to be made subjects by a document. And then this is where we were made subjects by these documents. And we are clearly named on it, every single person and their descendant, which holds subject status. So everyone that comes to New Zealand doesn't hold subject status. Only the ones that have descended from pre-1865 hold the subject status that is connected to the treaty, in my opinion. So let's go back. To, so every single tribe of yours has also got one of these but yours did not have your alien status removed because you weren't aliens. So you would have kept your natural, you would have been still being called um, fauna and flora, meaning that you were no different to a tree bound to the land by the roots of your feet. So you would have been different. So you didn't get any alien status removed, but they were made subjects So. That's why I don't want to talk to anybody that doesn't come from this time, because they just waste my time. So all of this was done under the Takara flag, because this blue flag, the Union Jack, didn't even come into New Zealand until the 1900s. So this had to have all been done under the, directly under the King's flag, and that's what they keep raving on about, is we're under the King, we're not under the Queen. And, but it was if it was done under that Takara flag, it, the flag doesn't belong to you. The flag belonged to the king of that time and his descendants, and it's bound up in that. It's bound in that, right? Which in turn is bound in that. Now, Let's go back to this 1990 here, which is, we'll go back to the original question, but he said, it's the New Zealand Bora, section three designates at a minimum that as pursuant to law as gifted by a king, that Takara is an enactment. Well, yes, because of the canton, which the king owns. So you were under the king's law and under the king's law, you were under those things that I've just told you about. But now let's go and look at the truth of what this act here is. Let's first go to look at the title of the act, which is the most important issue. Let's go to look at the title. It says that the short title and commencement, now read carefully, it says, this act may be cited as the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act. This act shall come in, oh, hang on, come into force uh, after it receives royal assent. All right. So it has received royal assent. But I wanted to go to the title. Wait, I've got to get snacks. Yeah, get snacks. I'm still here. Uh, I'm still here. 
all right, I'll wait for you because you're missing the most important act. But while I'm doing that, um, so I'll just show that there's these. All right, so you're back now. So what I want you to pay attention to before you go to section three is I want you to pay attention to an act and who this act belongs to. It was a centre to the king by the queen. It had royal assent, but I'll show you why it had royal assent in a minute. But look here, this is who it's actually for. This is an act to affirm, protect and promote human rights and fundamental freedoms in New Zealand and to affirm New Zealand's commitment to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. So this act is nothing to do with you. Where does the human rights come from? Human rights, UN, not a nation. Yeah, it's not yours. It's not the human rights, because you can see on the human rights, You'll see that there's a human rights in the UK. There's one in Australia, but I'll just put in New Zealand. So this is the Human Rights Act. And it, that's in there and it says, this is administered by the Ministry of Justice and it belongs to the race relations the Human Rights Commission and um, the United Nations and the Covenants and Conventions on Human Rights. That's who it all belongs to. It doesn't belong to you. You're only, as a New Zealand country, are signing up to provide better protection of their rights whilst they are in New Zealand. So it isn't for you. It's for people that come into our country that are not able to stand under this because they all come in post-1865. And so they don't have subject status. And wow. if they're Islamic, they can't attain subject status anyway. And if they're Jewish, they can't attain subject status. And if they're American, they can't attain subject status and if they are Catholic they can't attain subject status so that's why they brought it in for all of those people because America comes under inalienable rights they are aliens they're aliens because they threw Britain out of America before Britain was able to reach a covenant with the American Indians. So America threw Britain out, renounced their subject status, and they literally did steal America. And then because they were not able to stand under this Bill of Rights here, they made themselves the thing called inalienable rights. And that all comes under... That all comes under this here. Because you can see it in Alien Able, and then you go to look at our documents, and you can see from our documents, where's my one that's better? Have I still got mine up there? Here. Yeah, so you can see here that um, the alien status was removed. If you were not an alien in, in New Zealand, you became, they, they literally planted us as seeds in your country. And so the Americans are trying to force all of us to be aliens again when we're not aliens. And we don't want to be an alien because it's shit. Hold on. I've just got to um, call my dog. Just, I've got All to right. make sure he gets... Oh, no, here he is. I thought All he right. might have skyped off down the steps. 
Oh yeah, got to watch them. Right, oh, so, right, pay attention. So that your human rights, you know where the human rights come from now, right? And let's go back to our 1990. And so this is just says that you're going to protect the human rights that I've just shown you. So it isn't even for you. And it says that this bill here says that you will make a commitment to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Okay. Now you have to be careful because I'm just petitioning the government because under our one of the will, I use this one because it's easier, but you've got the actual will and Mary. It says here that we have the right to petition the king and all commitments and prosecutions for such petitioning are illegal. So um, oh, I won't go into there, that's complicated. I won't, all right. So never mind. they've just said that we've made a commitment. This is a bill, all right? This here is a bill. And it says here that we've made a commitment to them to pay all their bills for them, all right? So every single bill that they put through using this document is a bill to you as New Zealand people. It's in my last video. I'm not talking about it today. Um, so anyway, but if we want to protest any of the bills that they give us, what we can do is we go to here and we see here that we've got the right to petition the king and then we will go to here and we will see here this word person the individual and then this person we're saying we don't agree with that crappy law that you make and so as a person I'm going to go to the court and I'm going to petition to the king that you made this law that I'm not happy with, All right? And you can do that as a person. And then, um, and so I'll just come back here because I want to go over there in a minute. Are you staying with me? I'm staying with so you. So it says, this act may be cited as the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act. This act shall come into force. And then it says, Rights and freedoms contained in this Bill of Rights are affirmed in this Bill of Rights. Now, I want you to pay attention here. This Bill of Rights applies to acts done. This is Section 3 by the legislative, by the executive, or by judicial branches of the Government of New Zealand. So it's nothing to do with the queen or the king or your flag. By any person or body in the performance of a public function, power or duty conferred or imposed on that person or body by or pursuant to law. So this is talking about whenever a government official wants to make a law, right, they have to go and check this Bill of Rights to see if it's repugnant or not, all right? The United Nations one. Yes. Yeah. So they have a thing called religious freedom. Now, over in America, they have religious freedom right? And under their religious freedom, the high up rabbis of the <coughs> Semitic religion are permitted to cut the foreskin of the baby's penis, suck the blood from the baby's penis, and do those kinds of things. That's their religious freedom. It's not allowed by law in New Zealand. In America, they've got babies turning up at the hospital with brain something because of the herpes that they are contracting from the rabbis when the blood is sucked from the penis. Oh, oh. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. So it, that is a fact. I'm oh, not lying. That is, 
It's in the news, so, so that's repugnant to us. So that you can go here and look at, let's see what he said. He said, section four designates that no provision is invalid simply if inconsistent with the borer. So he says, if a law is inconsistent with the borer, it's not invalid simply because of that. So that they've got this penis sucking law, right? Yeah, penis. Penis blood sucking law. Yeah. I, I'm just saying what's that, what's it, you know, it's on there. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that that's the seed there. You can't deny that there's a seed and that's the seed. So, but they're saying section four designates that no provision is invalid. So that provision of the United Nations under religious freedoms is not invalid simply because it's inconsistent with this Bill of Rights. But it also says what it's talking about is on our side that no provision that we have is inconsistent simply if it's inconsistent with the borer. Have you got that? I'll just say no. that again because that's a bit complicated. He's flipped it. What it's talking about is that our Bill of Rights UK, King, our King's Bill of Rights, our Will and Mary, mm. that nothing that he says, no provision of our Will and Mary is invalid simply because it is inconsistent with the 1990 Bora. So under religious freedom, the, the 1990 Bora allows the sucking of the penis activity under their religion. But under our Will and Mary, that would come under cruel and unusual punishment to and a at young the baby. same time, if and I then, felt offended by you even saying that, then you have, you have, um, violated my human rights for it not to be criti even criticised or even spoken yeah. about then um, you've harmed me and then uh, well that comes under harm because it's illegal to speak against them that's right oh yeah well it's all kind of yes. making sense in a roundabout way well when you can see it on the paper there so if you see on the paper here so we've got um, no cruel and unusual punishments. So that is repugnant to their religious freedom, which if we think that the blood sucking would be a cruel and unusual punishment to a baby, especially when the babies are contracting herpes. So that would be repugnant to us, but ours would be repugnant to their religious freedom then we've got a law here that says that we have a freedom of speech and that it should not be questioned in any court or any place out of parliament. But they've got a law that says that my saying that the sucking of the baby's penis blood is repugnant to our pun unusual punishment they would say that's a harm to them because they said they would say I'm anti-Semitic. And so in their mind, I've committed a crime. And they've got the and ADL their penalty, behind them. <laughs> eh? They've got the ADL behind them, the anti-defamation league, you know. And then the, their and then their and then their repugnance, their no harm holds a penalty of death to me for speaking against them. Yeah. And my cruel and unusual punishment says, well, that would be excessive and so you cannot do that. So this is this battle that's going on. 
So, and, and it's why it all feels so, so alien. It well, it, yes, because it is color. alien, yes. And so that's why I don't use no harm. That's why I don't use no harm, because of everybody's perception of what is harmful is not the same. Their mm. perception is that if you speak against one of their religious practices, that is a harm. Yeah. And our perception is that it shouldn't matter what anybody says because words can't hurt you if you really believe in what you do. So that's a long argument there, but... So he said that um, it does it, Section 4 designates that no provision is invalid simply if it is inconsistent with the Bora 1990. And that's saying that, well, if you look at the Takara, forget about the Takara, you have to go to the Canton. Where does the Takara derive its power from? It derives its power from the Canton. If it didn't derive it to, from its power from the Canton, then why did they need the king in the first place? Why would they even use a St. George? They could just put any Canton that they wanted. So its power is derived from the St. George Cross. And where does the St. George Cross Canton derive its power from? from this 1688 law, because the canton is the law. So he's that's how he's been able to use this, that it designates that no provision is invalid simply if it is consistent. But if he accepts that, if he accepts that, then he must also accept that the canton of the St. George's Cross comes from here. This is where it comes from. And so therefore he must accept that these are the laws that he must function within. This is what he's using. And so that includes all subjects, not only Maori. So that flag does not belong to Maori. It belongs to all people who own subject status by their birth certificate. So that's why they want you to get rid of your birth certificate because they don't want you to be under this law that protects you anymore. They want their religious freedoms in your country, which they don't currently have, because they need to institute their alien status within New Zealand, and they want you out of your subject status. So, um, so where do we go here? So let's go to section four. No court shall, in relation to any enactment, whether past or made before or after the commencement of this Bill of Rights, hold any provision of the enactment to be impliedly repealed or revoked or to be in any way invalid or ineffective or declined to apply any provision of the enactment by reason only that the provision is inconsistent with any provision of this Bill of Rights. So he had put it very simply, is that um, any enactment or any statute that was established before this Bill of Rights shall not be annulled simply because it is inconsistent with this Bill of Rights. So all of the laws that I've just showed you continue to exist today outside of this 1990 Bill of Rights, but it's nothing to do with the Takara. It's to do with the St. George Cross and where it derives its power from, which is not owned by Maori or anyone. It's owned for, it just is what I've just explained to you. So then we've got this thing here called justified limitations. Now, as he mentioned that, then he goes on to say, well, get to the end of this and then I'll open you up for questions. Section five cannot prescribe any limitation to the enactment. This is what he's saying. Section five cannot prescribe any limitation to an enactment earlier than Tiriti o Waitangi. Indigenous sovereignty is then enshrined 
to the NZBORA90. And I'm saying that he's wrong. I'm saying that it's got nothing to do with the treaty. It's to do with the King's Law that I've just showed you and the other documents that we have that relate to that that I've just showed you that were all enacted into New Zealand under the King George's Cross, which derived its power from England, right? So it's not really anything to do with the treaty at all. And so then if you go to Section 5, this is what it says. Justified limitations subject to Section 4. The rights and freedoms contained in this Bill of Rights may be subject only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and de democratic society. So what they're saying is you can have all your religious freedoms that you want, but if any of them are repugnant, to our laws that came into power pre-1990, and it's justifiable that it would be um, dangerous for us, then they're not allowed to have it. So a religious freedom that allows them to cut the foreskin off our babies and suck the blood from their penises, that would be repugnant. And so they would not be allowed to have that law. But a law that says that they, under their religious freedom, are permitted to have an organisation that um, is, um, gives them a meeting place, gives them a place to talk about their values and all their things that they want, that law would be even if we said, oh, it's against New Zealand and, oh, we don't like having you and we don't want that freaking religion in our country, we, we wouldn't be able to have it because that is not repugnant or dangerous to us under our um, protective Protestant laws. Do you see, see what I mean? Yeah. So the interpretation consistent with this bill of... Now you see here where it says you'll see the change because here it's saying this Bill of Rights, right? And then you'll see up here, it will talk about this Bill of Rights and you'll see here where it will talk about this Bill of Rights. You see that? Mm. But here you'll see a shift where they've said, interpretation consistent with Bill of Rights to be preferred. And in this case, what they're talking about in my, I think, hang on. So it says, you've got to be careful here. This is where you'll see them joining two together when they're actually speaking about two documents and they're not speaking about one. And this is what's causing a lot of confusion because you'll see here where they've used only Bill of Rights, consistent with Bill of Rights to be preferred. That would come under here because it's only called Bill of Rights. That's what it's called. It doesn't even apply to any country. It is just a Bill of Rights. But what you'll see here is that they've then gone on to say, wherever an act of enactment can give meaning that is consistent with the rights and freedoms contained in this Bill of Rights, that meaning shall be preferred to any other meaning. So it's only if our enactment can give meaning that is consistent to their enactment. 
you see what I mean? So that's just similar to the argument that I've said to you. That you can see here. We don't have freedom of religion, but we do have, what we have is no cruel and unusual punishment. So that we can say, well, your religion is not a cruel and unusual punishment. So you could have that, but some of the practices of your religions would be a cruel and unusual punishment. So you wouldn't be able to have that. Do you see that? Yeah. So but they should always try when they're looking at the protections of this to see if they can relate that to the protections for them of this Bill of Rights here. That's what it's all talking about. However, none of this applies to you. You can always go to the application and who it applies to. It only applies to the legislative, executive and judicial branches of government and persons or body that are in the performance of a public function or a public power. So that's who this Bill of Rights is for. It doesn't belong to you at all. And it's just a, um, it, it is just a document that allows the immigration and the refugees and the workers and the United Nations to function within our country and protect their rights, that their rights are not encroached upon by our rights, but it also protects us by our rights from them where their rights don't encroach upon us. So you talk about two separate documents here, right? Now, and then all of this stuff here, don't worry about any of it. None of it applies to you. So you're using it because they they need Anglo-New Zealand people to use it because they're trying to make this a constitutional law so that they can get rid. They want to get rid of this because mm -hmm. under this, it's got protections of your lands and protections of your people. And it's got many restrictions on the United Nations and America in their alien status because they're all aliens. We aren't aliens. If we would, if we come from pre-1865, we're not aliens, but they want to make you all aliens. Yeah. And so they need to be rid of this. Now, now where he's talking about where does all his power come from? He's saying it's from Tariti, but I say no. Then when you go down to here down to the bottom, this is the main point here called section 28. And this is what he's talking about under section 28, rights and freedoms not affected. An existing right or freedom shall not be held to be abrogated or restricted by reason only that the right or freedom is not included in this Bill of Rights or if it is included only in part. So it's basically saying any laws that you had that were to do with your rights or your freedoms as the people of New Zealand, any of them are not, cannot be taken away from you because of anything that's in this Bill of Rights or in the United Nations. So that's why he's saying that the treaty doesn't come under this, that it has more power. And I'm saying to him that the treaty derives its power from the St. George's Cross of the King, and the King derives its power from the 1688 subjects status, which all of that is tied up in the documents that I've just shown you. And so none of us are bound by anything in this law. Unfortunately, they got the New Zealand Maori at some point to renounce their subject status, which you are permitted to do. When Peter Sharples went to the United Nations and renounced your subject status, 
he basically deleted the king's Takara flag because the the Takara flag, listen to me, the Takara flag is vested in the canton and the canton is the St. George's Cross and the St. George's Cross is vested in the restrictions of the King and Parliament under the UK law. So when Peter Sharples went to the United Nations and he only, they only want to use Article 2 and they want to remove Article 1 and Article 3 and only use Article 2 as the persons and sole sovereigns thereof, the Takara flag falls to the ground anyway right then and there because of the canton. So he cannot use the Takara flag and renounce the St. George Cross and what it is bound to. He can't do it. So that automatically would cause the twig of the Tereti to fall on the ground as well because you've removed the seed. Cannot remove the seed and the root without the, the, the twig disappears when you do that. Because a tree cannot exist without the seed, as you know. So it just brings everything into non existence. Everything. And that so is then what people are feeling today, especially in the last two years. It's just everything feels like it there's nothing underneath there's no seed that's what it feels like well then you have to go back then you go back to kahuri Rao's stance and kahuri Rao's stance is that we want to have no seed and they are correct no seed no trunk no branch no twig and so we just go back to your original status well then you go into a whole new territory because now we're going into Aotearoa. So let me see if I can find it here. Stop sharing. But if we go to, all right, we should be able to go to, see if I can find it for you before. Get a bit lost in here. So if we go to... Uh, section schedules section one of the succession very hard for me to find this I'm trying to find where it says um mm. trying to find where it says new zealand oh no i can get it from here So, so here is, okay, so you can go to, all right, I'll go to share screen. So let's remove the seed and see where we go when we remove the seed, where you're going to go. So you can do anything what you want, but let's just see where you go when you do each activity that you want to do or whoever wants to do it. So then you can go to the New Zealand Boundaries Act, which was created in 1863, right? So under the New Zealand Boundaries Act, it will tell you the colony of New Zealand for the purposes of the said act and for all other purposes, whatever, be deemed to comprise all territories, islands and countries lying between the 162nd degree of east longitude and 173rd degree of west longitude and between the 33rd and 53rd parallels of the south longitude. Now, we don't have to understand what that boundary is. We, re we really don't. But this is the law of New Zealand that tells you what are the boundaries of New Zealand. Now, Kahuri Arau, all right, so Kahuri Arau, want to go back to the place where the seed and everything was removed. When you remove the seed and all of those things, 
then you also remove the boundaries of New Zealand. And then what you have is a country that does not have any boundaries. And so when you have a country that doesn't have any boundaries, then you don't have a country in the earthly realm. So you can think about it as a godly realm and an earthly realm. In God's law, if you think about a tiger in the jungle, the tiger in the jungle doesn't have boundaries to its territories. It will just jump around and you can tell that tiger all you like that they don't belong in this area, but they'll keep going into that area until you put up a boundary and you say to that tiger, you're not allowed to go into this area and we put in this fence up to stop you and that designates the boundary of that tiger. And the tiger will learn to live within that boundary because the tiger will learn that it can't go on over that, over that wall. And if the tiger jumps over that wall, it will be shot and killed because that's the boundary that it's in. And so that's a man-made boundary. God never made boundaries on land, did he? God just said, here's the earth and you go and multiply and all live together happily. But it doesn't quite work out like that in the earthly realm. So in the earthly realm, they had to come up with boundaries because the, the fittest ones kept attacking the weakest ones. So Kahuriarau wants you go, to go back to God, the godliness of the land to the time when there were no New Zealand boundaries. When you go back to that time, you re-entered back into the time of God. Well, in that godly realm, it's not recognised as a country because it doesn't have the walls that say these are the walls that you're not allowed to jump over and it, it basically doesn't exist on the earthly realm. When it doesn't exist on the earthly realm, then you have no land debts and you have no paper. You don't have any paper titles because in the heavenly realm, paper doesn't exist in God's realm. And so therefore, all the land that each of your tribes are claiming to belong to them, that doesn't exist either. So you go back to the time where you all have no boundaries like a tiger in a jungle. And so that's where Kahuri Arau wants to take you. And then they have created a new boundary, which they call Aotearoa. And they have not released to us the information of where this place Aotearoa is, but I believe that they have written up those boundaries and they know exactly what they are. Because they all come under a man called, now what you have to do is you have to go and look at this word, Roa. You've got Akaroa, which means also known as Roa. You've got Aotea connected to Roa. You've got some other rowers. Anywhere where you see the word rower, it's actually a word of a place that is connected to this word rower. So we wanted to know what rower meant. So we have to go to the word rower. R-O-A. I hope it comes up. So <laughs> it's quite funny here. Go and have a look at this, Billy. You're going to laugh. This is what rower means. Rower means growth stocks, proprietary quant stock rating engine, the quant ratings, financials and stocks. Uh, it is the term called return on assets. That's what rower means. Nothing to do with the fucking Maori. And it says, refers to the financial ratio that indicates how profitable a company is in relation to its total assets. So corporate management analysts, investors use ROA to determine how efficiently a company uses its assets to generate a profit. So that's what ROA means. They even have it in Thailand. ROA exists everywhere. And that is just only what ROA means. And it means return of assets over the net profit and the asset. When you go to a tier rower, it is just a corporation that has been established 
within New Zealand and it needs to piggyback onto the New Zealand in order to give it legitimacy when it's got no legitimacy in our country. So that's what this ROA word is about. Well, I, I don't know about that because I, I think um, an acronym may have been placed on a, an actual... Well, you can see it because you can see it as you go through the things because Aotea is actually a place that was established within New Zealand and then you've attached ROA and then you've got AKA, which is attached to ROA, which is attached to the Akaroa Bank. And the more, I'm not going into it today, but the more that you go into it. So what well, it we- It sort of falls doing? apart when you even think of um, the word Toa, uh, Oh, yeah. no, no, sorry. Don't, don't, don't go into all of it because it's too extensive for us to go into today and it takes a lot of it. But I'm just saying that you're currently operating in three realms at the moment. You're yeah. operating in the United Nations realm under the 1990, all right? Mm -hmm. And then you're operating under, so I'm going to go into the Takara flag, but we're operating, no, we're operating post treaty realm where we've got all the documents that I've just shown you and then we're operating in the Whakaputang and the Declaration of Independence realm and I'm saying that they're all connected by the St George's Cross and then we're operating also in the um, Kahuria realm, the seedless realm where they have deleted all of the things that we've just I'm just I'm not saying who's right I ain't saying who's right who's wrong or what anybody what the fuck anybody's up to because I really don't know but I'm just saying that these are the what's all going on that's causing all the confusion mm -hmm. and there are multiple areas going on in New Zealand and I'm just saying that these are the various areas that people are using to fight against each other and I'm saying that it doesn't matter which fight that you put your two legs in, you, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, you can't stand with one leg in each realm. So you've got to put, your, you've got to find out where you want to have your, your, your legs. And you need two legs and wherever you're going to have your legs, that's where you need to fight from that basis. And then, but know that if somebody else is fighting where their legs are in another basis, you need to know what their basis is. It doesn't mean you have to agree with their basis or that you have to uphold their basis, but you need to know what basis they're fighting from so that you can combat them from your basis. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of having that knowledge and deciding where you want to be and, and everything, where you derive your power from. But I'm saying if you derive your power from the St. George's flag, then you can't discount all the other documents. It's impossible because St. George has signed up because you can see here clearly you can see here that um so you see here here's our bank which is the union bank this is on the first schedules right so I'm going to show you some other documents in a minute, but we're still on this 1990. We're not out of there yet. So you see here this first schedule, and you see here AB, and the Aboriginals were called the AB, AB, AB plus original. And then this attaches to the bank and the joint stock company, all right? And then there's a second schedule, and it gives the true list of the names of the people, of the existing people of this company. Now, the Maoris have got this. To you who doesn't have it, it's that fucking Aotearoa. They don't have it. So then it gives, it removes our alien status. Now, this is called an ordinance. And I didn't understand what ordinance meant. But ordinance basically means... If you go to ordinance... It is a decree. It's a decree. And then when you know what does the word decree mean, 
So you can go back to your document and you'll see that this decree was given directly from Her Majesty. Now, it doesn't actually say, but it is a Victoria. So the decree was given to them. This is a royal decree. And a royal decree, if you uphold the Takara flag and the St. George's cross, then you cannot, you cannot renounce a royal decree. You simply can't do it because the St. George's cross is vested in the king and the king is vested, the king is vested in this here. We know that to be true. And so when the king is vested in here, then the royal decree is based on this here. So it's all bound in together, not in your Tariti. Your Tariti is irrelevant. And so you would have to renounce the Takara flag, renounce the St. George's Cross if you want to get rid of all of this. And if you want to get rid of my royal decree, you would have to renounce that flag. In renouncing that, you go back to an area of the country where you don't have you don't have your territorial boundaries. You go to an area where you don't have your territorial boundaries, then you're going into the area of Kahuri around. I, I, I don't know what goes on there. But you see, it's a lot deeper than what you think. Now let's go back to our 1990. And our 1990, uh, as you know, because it comes under section 19 and that binds you over here to the Human Rights Act under section 19. So then if you go and look here, you have to be very careful because then you go to the functions of the commission. And then when you go to the functions of the commission, what you'll see is that they've put the Treaty of Waitangi in here. You'll see that it was not put. Oh, where is it? Oh, shit. <laughs> Why wasn't it put in the... Um, I've lost it here. No declaratory judgments. You're probably swimming around a bit in your head, but you'll get it later. So I'll just I'll go out of that. <laughs> it was quiet. We gotta go and put the pot on. Hold on. Right, go and put the pot on. Yeah, you're gonna need the pot, all right. So you can see that the New Zealand Bill of Rights You can see that the New Zealand Bill of Rights has removed the treaty, the flag, it's removed everything from any directions in here, all right? But here's the sneaky thing. When they put the Human Rights Act here, because they were not permitted to put those laws into here, but they've done a sneaky thing in section five because they've put the New Zealand Bill of Rights 1990 into here and then they've gone and put your treaty into here and then they've gone and written themselves this which says any matter affecting human rights including the desirability of the legislative, administrative or other action to give better protection to human rights to ensure better compliance with the standards 
laid down in international instruments. Oh, yeah. And then they've said here, the desirability of New Zealand becoming bound to any international instrument on human rights. So they have basically, whereas when you see here that under, oh, well, that's why I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Whereas you see here that under this Bill of Rights, your treaty and everything has been removed from any power that they have over you here, they've done the sneaky because they've then gone and placed it into here. And then they've said under KII that you will be bound to any international instrument under their alien laws that they make. And then Peter Sharple signed you up at the United Nations. And so you are basically bound to them, even though, even though you are protected under this. So that's what I've taken to the court to complain about, to ask them to sort it out for me. So, um, so then what they what they've done so they're keeping you within all of this here um and why are they keep you focused on here which has got nothing absolutely nothing to do with you why are they keeping you focused on here well it's because they want you all to be bound to any international instrument on human rights which includes religious freedoms and that would include sucking the blood from the baby's penis and giving the baby's herpes a brain. So, yeah, well, that's true oh, because they, have, that's, yeah. they are aliens in America. They come under inalienable rights and under their inalienable rights, they have religious freedoms and the place where the babies are being taken to the hospital because of the blood being sucked from the penis is in America. That's where it's happening because they have religious freedom and we don't actually have it. And they're trying to make us have it. What do you think uh, could be a, a, the thing behind American and others, in brackets, religious groups, buying land here and then turning it in somehow to Māori land? Okay, so then I'm going to tell you the, um, the most important thing that you all have to remember is that um, if you look at the 1865, if you look at all of the people that were brought in, they took, away, first of all, they took away their alien status. When they took away their alien status, they made them subjects. Now, what a lot of people don't know what does this word subject mean? And the, what the word, sub, hopefully this is the last video I'm ever going to have to say to this so all you people listen up. The word subject was created and it meant that people that had subject status were not permitted to buy pure title land. People that have alien status are permitted to buy pure title land. That's what they did with the people that they brought to New Zealand that came under the... This is why they're denigrating the New Zealand company and they want all people that come under the New Zealand company to be made null and void. And it's because of these documents that I've shown you. People that are of subject status aren't allowed to buy your land in its pure title. If they remove the subject status of us and they give us the alien status... People of alien status are permitted to buy your land in its pure title. Here's what happens. When the New Zealand Maori or Aboriginal as they were, they owned a pure title land. And if an alien brought that pure title land from them, that land was gone forever. And you never ever, you could cry and scream all your pretty little heads when I argued. That pure title land is gone and you can never retrieve it. And, but if the New Zealand Aboriginal 
sold, the, they wanted to sell the land and they sold that land to either the New Zealand company or they sold it to the, well, it, it always went through the Queen. They sold the land to the Queen and the Queen held the pure title and then the Queen would sell a paper title to the person that wanted to buy it. When the person that wanted to, when the person that wanted to buy it, they were protected under the 1688, the forfeiture of person by a New Zealand Aboriginal was illegal. But they only ever held that land in paper title. When the Aboriginal said, I want that land back, the Crown or the King or the Queen would go to that person that held the paper title because they have two titles. One, one it, when you get land titles, they're in two titles with a serrated edge. So when those serrated edges are separated, it's one is in its pure title and one is in its paper title. And the pure title serrated edge title sits either in the hands of the Aboriginals or it sits in the hands of the Queen because the Aboriginal has sold it to the Queen. The Queen gives the serrated paper title to the subject or even the alien who has bought it. It's when the subject or the alien, the, when the Aboriginal says, I want that land back, the Queen has to go to that subject or alien and say, would you be willing to sell that land back to me? The Queen will buy it back. And then since the Aboriginal sold it in the first place, the Aboriginal is then permitted to buy that back and it's pure title, right? And then that's how they get their pure title back. And you see, the problem is that what they're getting you all to do is to take back your pure title and on sell it to aliens. When an alien purchases your land that is not through the queen, the alien owns your land in its pure title state. And you can never get that back. So that land then rests, I don't know where, I don't know where it goes, but so when they brought all these people that I showed you those documents with all those names, they immediately removed their alien status, which means that they were not permitted to buy a single square inch of your land in its pure title. And they were made subjects immediately under the New Zealand company. And that's why the New Zealand company was allowed to purchase all that land because they were not allowed to own your pure title. And so that you were all protected by that, that the land always, always in perpetuity sat in its pure title in the king or the queen. And it was always available for you to reclaim it back at any time that you so wish after you jumped certain hoops. So all these lands that you're taking back, when you sell it to a person that is not of subject status, like the Muslims just bought 50,000 acres, they own it, they can own it. It depends if you've leased it, but the lease is only rested in, the lease is only rested in your people not rested in the queen anymore. It's rested in your people. And the Muslims just presented the New Zealand Maori king with the Quran written, translated into Maori language. And all they will do is breed in a Muslim into your um, title holders, and then they will own the land through that because it's not in the Queen and they're not of subject status. So is this with um, Iwi buying lands back? 
Well, they they ERE break them. being a corporation of um, ATRA. Well, a, a, the corporation that is the Iwi Trust, say, will buy the land back. Um, not as a an individual or a or a person or the, what status is that if it's um hold on it's um i think that um it's a long conversation and i just i don't have all the answers but i i really don't and i still have many laws to show you so yeah um, oh, i'm just trying to put it together you know in my in my head what you're saying so we we of the anybody that came from the New Zealand company, even if they have ownership of certain lands and even if this battle is going on, they are of subject status and they're trying to get all of us Anglo people that have documents like mine into the alien status. So any lands that that we had purchased. Yeah. Um, see. Yeah, I can hear you when you're talking. You have to see where they, where did the, where did the Americans and the French and the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons, where did they fail? They had come into New Zealand in 18, pre-1835, and they had bought, this is even what, um, this is where Kahuri I was trying to get out of. They had bought all of the lands and they thought that they owned it in pure title. And, but what had happened was, so people who are subjects automatically are forbidden. It doesn't matter where they go in the world, doesn't matter what country they are, Every single person that was given subject status on their birth certificate is forbidden from buying pure title land. And that's how it got happened is that the missionaries had through the 13 chiefs that signed the Whakaputanga, the missionaries had bought up the entire country in a corporation with what they thought was pure title land. And the Queen came in with Tamati Wakanene and she said, oh, no, you're of subject status and your land, any land that you bought automatically belongs to me. And she said nothing to do with the natives, or he, she, nothing to do with the natives, it all belongs to me. It happened in Australia, it happened everywhere. And so what they had to do is they had to create aliens of English descent, they had to create uh, aliens, which is what they did through America. They threw the British out, they renounced their subject status and they made themselves aliens. And then when they made themselves aliens, so that um, when they bought up pure title land, they were not permitted to have those lands confiscated by the king or queen. So the queen, confiscated all the lands of the missionaries because they did not have alien status. And so this all can be tied into America, why they made themselves aliens. And, um, and so what they're trying to, so then what the queen did was she started this triangular thing that she did, that all those lands that she took back she said to the Maori, do you want this pure title land back? If you want this pure title land back, you then have to um, pay me the money that I had to pay to get it. And because they did sell it, that is true. And she said, then I will take it from them and I will give it back to you and I will give them the money that you took from them. I will give it back to them and then I will give you. So they had to fix the, the wrong the right, they had to fix the wrong. And then many of then she also gave them the option 
that you can now buy this, you can now sell this land to me if you want to. And then I will open it up to the New Zealand company and all that land would become crown lands and all of that. And most of it was sold back. But when it's sold back, what you need to be aware of is that that pure title always belongs to you. Do, do, do you understand that? So you, they can't, you can't steal land. How the fuck do you steal land? You can't. It's always there. You can't, it's not like you can pick it up like a freaking computer and walk out the door with it. So that land always sat as a pure title in the Queen, right? So, um, so what they're trying to do now is to get us all into alien status. And when you leave the Queen um, and they want you to buy land, they want you to sell land to who? They want you to sell land to um, Muslims, um, Semitic people, and even perhaps Catholic people, I'm not sure about them. But, and those people don't come under the subject law that they're not allowed to buy pure title land. I think in my thing, and that's why they're trying to get you under inalienable rights and out of your indubitable rights. It's all to do with who can buy land and who can't. And so that's why they brought in a whole, that's why they brought in a whole lot of aliens from Germany and they made, they removed their alien status. Why did they remove the alien status to prevent them from purchasing pure title land? And then they made the subjects that if they did go behind the queen's back sneakily and make negotiations sneakily behind the back, then they, it wouldn't even matter because the Queen could always, always take it in their subject status. So that's why they did what they, they did. So these people that you're selling to now, when you make New Zealand a republic and you throw the Queen out completely and you make New Zealand a republic through the United Nations in Aotearoa, any lands that you sell through Aotearoa can be sold, I think, in their pure title, as long as they're not sold to anybody that holds subject status, anyone. So I'm not quite sure where all that goes. But mm. so what they created here, you've got two systems. And so under us, what you've got here is you've got this here under the St. George's Cross of the subjects and then you've got all these people here that are together with you, we're with you, right? And then you've got um, then you've got this treaty here, right? Which is a whole document and then the top Peace, yes, is governance. And the middle piece, yes, is the lands and forestries. And then the last piece asked you if you wanted to be subjects. And it only says, uh, hang on. Oh, so here it only says, to concur and what your group has done, because I've talked to them, they removed this first piece and they removed this third piece of you being subjects and they tried, they have tried only to keep the second piece. And um, just by the things that I've told you without going into it too deeply, you can see why they're trying to do that. And so, but we do have this here. And then you've got your declaratory judgment set. Now I'm going to show you something here. Mm. Are we able to just pause it or I've just got to go and um, I've got the- Oh, shoot. Yeah, I can pause.
This meeting is being recorded. All right, there you go. So, um, can you say, uh, I've made a mistake oh, about the group. my group, my, I haven't yeah. got a group. Right. I am uh, part of a, a wider group of people, many of whom have different approaches to trying to deal with this confusion. I, I have no specific alignment with, I'm listening to the lot, all of it, whether it's the purple thumb stuff, the, the Y1738 claim, um, which they're not one and the same. There, there are many different approaches within the group of people who, well, the, the group of people I originate from is from the Shelley Bay occupation. And I, I'm de, I am there as an observer of what's happening specifically in Wellington, specifically um, on, a, on the Miramar Peninsula with property developers, iwi, um, the police, uh, yeah, the, yeah, All right, the, so, the yeah, council, so when I say, so when I say, yeah, so when I say your group, um, I'll just apologize for saying your group, because, but I, I, I am trying to say is that what we're talking about is that there are many, many groups and all of these groups and are all of these groups are functioning under a different perspective. And I'm all I'm saying is that I'm putting up all the perspectives that each of the groups are functioning under and trying to make sense of who's work, working under which one or not working under which one. And when I say your group, what I should just say is the groups or some groups. We've got the Shelley Bay group because the, what, what they're doing is getting everybody focused on pieces of land. And while you're focused on your piece of land, they're coming in and taking the country. So I'm trying to get people to focus on the country rather than focus on just that piece of land. But yeah, anyway, I... The, um... There, there is the, the thing that, that this area is my world and my country because I'm not in uh, well, this up is, the top. Yeah, well, this, I'm not down yeah. south. You I know, can only this view is from this point. Right. So this is the problem that I'm coming up against with all of the all of the all of the groups is that so they're all saying exactly like you. I'm only functioning in this little piece. And I don't give a toss about any of the other pieces. I will guard, I will protect my own little piece. But I'm saying to you that, um, you, you know, well, I'm not going to go into that far. I just, I'm focused on the country. I'm saying that a country just doesn't function like that. It never has before. And the idea that each of you is going to get one little piece and guard one little piece and the rest of the country be damned. It's it, not it that. Work. It's not that. You can only focus on. Your, well, I mean, you're focusing I, I on the country from another country, Kate. I, when you're living I, I in your country, I think it's a cop out, and I think it all comes down to greed. People want one piece of land, and they want to govern one piece of land, and they want the rest of the country be damned. But I'm saying to you, eventually, right. if you continue to function like that. Eventually, it's going to come back to bite you in the ass if you don't concern yourself with your piece of land, but more importantly, concern yourself with your country. But I'm not going to fight about it with you because I yeah. know what you're talking about and I just don't want to go there because I'm only showing you the laws yeah. that everybody's yeah. Yeah. available. I don't want to be involved with any of your arguments about these little pieces of fucking land because I just don't give a toss. I'm just saying these, I'm focused on the laws that they're talking about and where they're talking about, and I will only point out where they have been wrong in their point of law that they're talking about. And that's all I talk about. And whatever this issue is, who owns and we own and they own and whatever, I just cannot go there. I can't. So I don't want. 
So I know what you're saying, you're focused on your little piece of the land and they are focused on their little piece of the land and they're like 30 or 40 or 50 or even more than 100 people that are all focused on their little piece of land while you're all focused on your little piece of land, the, the, the devil is walking in and taking the whole country. And I'll tell you, uh, so I was, all right, Billy, no, don't okay, take time. Nah. All right, now go back to where we were. So that you know that, all right, we're on record now. But anyway, I will not say your group anymore because I, I am wrong in saying that. I will accept that I'm wrong to say to you your group or your thing because I don't actually know anything about what you're doing. I have no idea what you're doing. I have no idea what your fight is. I have no idea the pieces of land that you're talking about. And so I can't speak to well, you. Well, it is to do with the Wellington Company, which is um, it's from to do the, with New the New Zealand Company. Company. But I think we have to do another video on that. Well, there's the Wellington yes. Company now. Okay. Yes. So Okay, so okay. we need to do this first, and then we need to have a big discussion about all of that. All right? Because yeah. I'm involved with that as well. So, but let's do this first, shall we? Right. Go so, on. now, um, so that you see here that you've got, if, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. I just don't want to go there because we'll be all arguing and I just, I always end up in big battles about it. Everyone I've been on about that. So, I have to go back to safety and just talk about what the papers all say. So, here you see here, it says, that you see here, Declaratory Judgments Act, right? Yeah. And you saw that it relates to the person, which is what you're talking about, the individual. And then you can go to, uh, where is your tre treaty? Then you can go to the treaty, the second article that you see here. And then you see here that it says the individuals, right? So that's the individuals. And then you've gone to your, um, 19, uh, your 1908, which talks about the person, 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 person. And then I want to draw, you, draw your attention to this. So you, you know the 1990 Bill of Rights now, and you know the 1688 Bill of Rights, and you know section three, four, and five, what that relates to of the 1990, and you know S28, what that relates to in the 1990. And you know S19, which takes you out of all of this and into the United Nations where they've placed the treaty. So you, you see all that map there that you can see. Yeah. What had happened was in 2016, they, tried to, they have tried continuously to infuse the United Nations laws into the New Zealand law. And what happened was, you can see here what they've done. So you see here that this was in regards to the declaratory judgments, terms of reference, Oh, this is not the one that I wanted. They've removed the one that I wanted, have they? So this talks about that the Declaratory Judgment Act was only um, in Section 3 is only 172 72 words. And what they wanted to do was to find out if they could expand it and make it larger and insert all of your customary laws and everything into this through the 1990 Bill of Rights, anything that was in there, but they said they would not consider the constitutional status of the New Zealand Bill of Rights 1990, or whether the High Court can issue an inconsistency. What they were only considering is that if they could take this act here, all right, and I'll turn off that rower, and I'll turn off the boundaries. And I'll turn off the treaty. And I need that. Right, so.
All right. So what they only wanted to know is how they could infuse this 1990 onto the Declaratory Judgment Act. Now, they did this in 2016. Now, I'm going to show you about the courts because that's what you're asking me is how do I get into the court? And I'm going to show you why they're blocking you in the court. All right. So bear with me. Um, what happened was, if I can't find the one that I had. But the one that I had that I looked at at the last time, it said that this uh, law commission um, was abandoned. So it said that they had abandoned the terms of reference because they weren't able to combine them. And so what they came up with was this. It's called the Judicial Review Act of 2016. So they had come up to this judicial review of 2016 here. All right. Are you, now you have to pay attention because you're going to need to know. Did I upset you then? I didn't mean to upset no, you. No, I'm Billy. not. I'm just I'm not upset. Are you upset? No, I'm not upset. I'm just texting oh. something. I've got it. That's it. I've done that. All right. I didn't mean to upset you. No. I'm not crying. Just, just, we just have to remember that when it comes to that, you and I are on opposing teams because I'm with the New Zealand company and you are not. And so, or you might be because of your Anglo side, so you probably are. But um, so we're on opposing teams. So I'm, I'm going to be fighting fiercely for my team on that as well. But I'm just showing you where we all are. So you can see here under this Judicial Review Act, that it says here that, that the purpose is the judicial amendment which sets out procedural provisions for the judicial review and they're making a judicial review of statutory power and the failure to exercise statutory power and all of this crap. And you'll see here that none of this I don't know if it says act by, yes, act binds the Crown under the Crown proceedings. However, and it's that this act must be read subject to the Crown proceedings. And you'll see that this is to do with employment relations, anything to do with employment. That 1990 is to do with the employment. And this is where they're putting all you people when you're not supposed to be in here. This is to do with the 1990, which is to do with the United Nations and the human rights and employment contracts. Whenever you try to go into the court, they block you by using this as they're trying to block me. So because they're using Uh, is it this one that I've got? Hang on, I'll have to go to, um, so I'll go to the court here. So I can go down to here. So this is from the court and I had asked for a fee waiver. All right, and then he's gone to the Court of Appeal Fees Regulations and the Court of Appeal Fees Regulations is based on this here Judicial Review of the Judiciary Amendment Act 1972. Now it's going to get a bit complicated, but keep your head focused on individual and group. 
and you're in the treaty right and you're talking about your individual status and putting it aside from your group status and I'm talking about that too I'm saying as an individual I have rights that have got nothing to do with the group and so I've gone to the court as an individual outside of the group to fight my case. And I've said, I don't care what the group is doing, I'm going as an individual, all right? Now the court have blocked me. And how have they blocked me? Due to the Judicature Amendment Act, which they, which here is comes up under the appeal court. It can just come under the court as well, but this one comes under the appeal court, the appeal court fees and regulations, 5-2-B. So then you go to appeal court. Fees and regulations. Okay, right, bear with me. Ooh. So then we go to, uh, where's appeal? Court of Appeal rules. Oh, no, 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 this is the old one. Uh, all right, hang on. Must just go here. That's supreme. Why doesn't it come up appeal court? Oh, here. All right, that's not up. Okay, I'll just pause my thing for a minute. Oh, it's, is it sharing? This meeting is being recorded. Right. So you've got your Court of Appeal fees regulations, right? And if you see here, Um, does that show up my email? No, it shows up the document, not your email. I think I can just um, be easier if I just stay on here. Right, I'll go to there. Right, you can see that, right? Yeah. All right, and then you see... Over to the court. Right, you can see that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you'll see here that he says that uh, five in the Court of Appeal, 54A and 54B. See that there? Yeah. And then if you go to 54A, What you'll see here in 5.2, the registrar may weigh the fee on the basis of one criteria specified in some clause three, that the applicant either is able, not able to pay the fee or that it concerns a matter of genuine public interest. And then it must be under sub clause four. And then what you'll see there in sub clause four, it says that your case must be a genuine public interest. It must be a proceeding that is commenced to determine a question of law. 
that is of significant public interest to the public or a substantial section of the public. So your case can't be taken on an individual basis. You have to only take it in as a group and it has to be for a substantial people of all of the public. And then the second one says, it must raise the issue of the public interest and the appeal um, against the judgment decree or order given in the proceeding commenced by, must be commenced by an organization. So you have to have, you have to be preceded by an organization or you have to be preceded in genuine, well, actually you, you have to be, it has to fit to criteria that it's in the significant public interest and it has to be brought forward by an organization that by its governing enactment, I wouldn't write it down if I was you because I'm not finished. I'm, I'm gonna show you your way, I'm gonna show you your way out of this. I'm not your, writing in, anything down. No, well, you can write it down, but I want, I really need you to listen so you'll know I'm going to be going into important things that to fit you. I'm showing you how they're blocking you, and now I'm going to show you your way out. So I need oh, you I to need be very focused. Right, you have to focus. So the organisation must, by its governing enactment, constitutional rules, be expressly necessary for the implication required to promote matters in the public interest so that um, that organisation can be the Waitangi Tribunal or that organisation can be the United, the Human Rights Commission or that organisation can be the women's rights groups or the ethnic groups or whatever. Have you got that? Yeah. So here's what the court said to me. He said, we um, he said to me, 4B does not apply because it relates only to appeals of decisions made in proceedings that were commenced by organization. So he said, you can't get in here because even if it is in the public interest, it's not being commenced by an organization and therefore you cannot come. And then he says, 54A does not apply to you either because it must determine a question of law that is of significant public interest or a substantial section. Now, this is the way that he is blocking you because he is functioning So you understand those two, right? Mm. Well, just before I start, I'll show you. So he is functioning from here. And then this is only a regulation. It's not even an act. It's a regulation. So it goes like that, regulation, act, constitution. And this comes under regulation. Now, he's, so he's functioning from there and you, and this is to do with um, that I showed you before the employer's rights, the criminals, um, all of these employers and all of that. And so this is all matched to So he at the court, has matched that all up. To that's all matched up to this act here. 
And so that's why you're not able to get into the court or you're not able to get um, anything done as an individual because every time you go to the court or you go to any organization, any of the police or any of them, the second that you use that 1990 Bill of Rights, you're taking yourself out of the constitutional law that you have from pre 1865 and you're putting themselves, you're putting yourself into the alien jurisdiction and you are losing on your alien jurisdiction that you're standing in. If you stop using your alien jurisdiction, which you can never achieve anything as an individual, because they've said there that you cannot. And so you're doomed to failure the minute you use any one of these two, if you use that human rights, or if you use that 1990, they automatically put you into that jurisdiction of the judicial review procedure of 2016. And you've lost your case before you even start as an individual. All right, now they've done that to me, but I've come back with my appeal because they keep trying to force me into here and I keep yanking them out of there and saying, I ain't in there. And so if you go to what your one is, I haven't so got you, one, Kate. Eh? I, I personally have nothing. I haven't got anything. So when you say your one, oh, I don't not know what you, you're talking oh, about. Anyone. Okay. What, what word shall I use? Well, I don't know what you're referring to because I, personally, I, I have nothing. I am just All right. I don't want to go listening. that. No, I don't want to talk about that. No, we'll end up in the yeah, argument. Uh, right. uh, yeah, you're, you're, I know what you're saying. You're saying, all right, you're nothing. All right. So the people, listen to me. Listen to me. You have said to me, this is what you said to me. You have said to me, I would like to go to the court. Have you said that to me or not? As an individual. Well, I would like the ability to. I'm not quite sure what I'd be taking to right. court. So exactly. that's what you've said to me. You've said to me, yeah. I would like the ability to go to the court. And yes. I'm showing you yes. how you get that ability to go to the court. And, um, and I'm showing you how they will block you from going yes. to the court. And I'm showing you how to get out of that and use your ability to go to the court as an individual. But mm. I'm saying to you that in order to use your ability to go to the court, because you, you cannot go to the court without a seat. You're trying yep. to go to the court with the tweet, but you can't unless you recognize the seat. And so if you don't recognise the seed, you end up having to be in common law courts where you make common law decisions which have no power in the court that has been planted by the seed. And if you want to run around there, the cat chasing the tail until the cows come home, they're going to continue to throw you off. So in order for you to go into their construct of the court, you have to recognize their seat. Or you go into the Kahuria Rao construct where you just do things verbally with no paper, no books, no nothing. But you, I don't know how you're going to function, but you can do that if you want. But it won't get you into the court because the very action of entering the court requires you to produce a piece of paper from the tree that comes from the seed. 
So I don't, I don't know how you want to deal with that. But that I, when I've gone to the court and I'm prepared to recognize the seed, to use it for the things that I need to use it for, because the common law courts or whatever you're doing, it ain't getting anywhere. So it's getting you on the streets beaten up with the police blocking off the various streets and well, not you, but people, people, I must stop saying you, it's getting people oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thrown off and it, and um, I, 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 I don't know what you're going to do, but this is what I'm doing. I'm just showing you what's available to you and you can either use it or not. But let me tell you something. If you, if you use, a single piece of paper, then you must recognize the seed. If you choose to only use your verbal, if you want to go back to the ancient times, pre-seed and the ancient times, and you don't want to use a single piece of paper, then um, I don't, I, you can, the only way that you can do that is to set up individual um, meetings that you will have like down at the Marae and you will all chat together but I will say to you it has no power because you're all saying not you they some people are saying that their power rests in the Takara flag with the St George's Cross and I'm saying you cannot recognize the St. George's Cross without recognizing the seed that it comes from. And so therefore you have to renounce that flag as Kahuria Rao has done, go back to no flag, no papers, no land boundaries and figure your way through that, figure their way through that. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I'm only showing, I'm answering the question that said, how do I go to court as an individual to fight the things that I want to fight? All right. Oh, I'm just getting a phone call. Mm. Can you pause it? Hold on. Oh, oh my goodness, that's not even on record. Is it on record? Hi. Yes, it is. Hi. This meeting is being recorded. So that I've said to you, you have to figure out where your legs are to what we're talking about. But my legs presently, where I've got you, and I've put your legs presently for the action of um, um, bringing this video to fruition is that I've put your legs as an individual into the seed of the paper title and the paper laws. And if you want to remove your legs from there, then you can, but for this purpose, I need your legs to be there for this moment. And then you, and then, so this is just this area, right? There's several areas. So they're blocking you at the court. If, 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 if you, or if somebody went to the court as an individual, as I have, they're coming back with the judicial review that you need to have an organization and I've just sent in my appeal to that because I've said to them no I'm not in that law I don't recognize your United Nations law and I don't recognize the 1990 Bill of Rights and I don't recognize the Human Rights Act in regards to me that's your problem don't give me that problem it ain't my problem yeah. so I've said I recognize Queen Victoria, in my case, in your case, it's the king. I recognize Queen Victoria for my case because it is Queen Victoria by the royal decree under the St. George Takara flag that my alien status was removed and I was given my subject status. So all the people that are functioning under that 1990 in the human rights and this judicial review procedure of an organization are functioning as aliens. And I'm said to them, I'm not an alien, I'm a subject. So then I showed them as a subject, what happens when I come up under a subject? 
So then I have pointed out to them that I've said to them as a subject, the, um, what you said to me, that you must ha have a group under, um, uh, four, uh, under four, subsection 4B, that I must have a group, I've said that doesn't apply because the declaratory order says that I can be a person. And then where do I derive my power from here? Well, I derived my power from um, this document and I've sent this to the court. And I've said that under this document, which is a royal decree given in 18, it was actually given in 1843, which was pre Union Jack flag. And so it must have been given under the Takara flag on the St. George's cross. It had to have been. And so that was when my alien status was removed. And I said, and then under this, it says all and singular, the persons and not the group are permitted to go to the court, you see? And then, I'll show you another law in a minute. So then if you go to, and that belongs to me, because why? Because of the Treaty of Waitangi, that some groups are saying, we only recognize, some groups are saying, we only recognize the second article. And they said that the first article, the Kawatana, is yours. And I'm saying, well, yeah, if you want to recognize the first article under the Kawatana of the governance, well, under the Kawatana and the Takara flag, that's what they gave to me. And under that, as an individual, I get to use the, um, I get to use this as a person. And this takes me out of all of their laws under the New Zealand Bill of Rights, where I use S28, that says that all of my rights that were created pre-1990 are not affected. And that's what he's talking about, are not affected by this law. And that's what he's talking about when he's talking about the Takara. But the Takara, He's making out the Takara, he's saying yes, because of the St. George's Cross. And so we don't come under any of these laws. The problem with him is, is that he's using the Bora and the Bora, and that, that is the false flag that he's deceiving you by. Because he says, section five cannot prescribe any limitation to enactment earlier than Tariti. Indigenous sovereignty is then enshrined in the New Zealand Bora 1990. And I'm saying, no, mate, it isn't. You're indigenous, wow. It may be indigenous, which belongs to all those refugees because you saw how they had bound you to, um, the, you saw how they had bound you to the United Nations through section 19 to be bound by any international instruments. And that includes all Indigenous people, but not you as native New Zealand Maori. As native New Zealand Maori, you, and that has got nothing to do with the flag, nothing. That flag is only tied to S28 and your sovereignty is bound in S28, which does not apply to every single Indigenous person on this planet. It applies only and solely to you. And how do we know that it applies only and solely to you? Well, we can just go and look at our treaty because it says here um, that the respective territories to which you are the sole sovereigns thereof. And it says that your power lay not only, not only in the independent chiefs, but it also lays in the individuals. And so that's, that's rested in here. 
So it's nothing to do with Indigenous. It's to do with um, your Native people. So that, when we see there, that if you were to go to the court as an individual and you... Um, if you were to go to the court as an individual and you were willing to recognise the seed of the tree and you were willing to recognise where does the power of the Takara flag derive its power from? It derives its power from the king. And where does the king derive his power from? He derives his power from the succession that went to Queen Victoria and where and then what happens to Queen Victoria? Well, she did all the Queen Victoria ordinances, which are in fact royal decrees. And she did all of those ordinances pre-1865, pre-Union Jack. So you as someone, as an individual, that recognises the seed, if you work within all of those laws as a whakapapa, as a lineage to your power, as a lineage, rather than looking at only one paragraph, if you see the lineage of your law, that's when you will know power, not you, that person. That's when that person will know power and they can use that power. The person as an individual cannot, cannot use the Takara flag or the St. George um, without acknowledging all of the rest of the rule decrease. You simply cannot do it. But you can, there, the person, and so if you want, if, if, if the person wants to operate under that seed of the tree of our whakapapa and our lineage, then that person, such as me, has a lot of power. And that's why when I went to the court, I they tried to add 1990 onto my case and I got denied at the court twice. And then I removed all of that and I only used the king's law. And then that's how I got to enter into the court. And they struck me out based on the later laws, later laws that were created in 1972. And so that's why the appeal court ordered Jacinda Ardern and all of them that they must come to the court and ordered them to come. Yeah. And then they tried to slap me with a $10,000 fee in order for that to happen. And I've come back with them and I've said, under our individual um, covenants with the Paramount Chiefs under the Takara flag, in fact, I might even use the fucking thing myself, under that flag, um, I think I might start flying it. Um, <laughs> under that, I'm not under any of those laws, but I'm under this seed here that I'm sitting under. And so I'm waiting for the judge's answer, which I haven't not received. And so I have presented to him the individual. That's what I've got going there. I've said, hey, I'm allowed to as an individual. I didn't put the treaty in there, but I damn well should have. And, and so I must add it. But I said under these laws here, pre-1865, um, all of your blockers are not relevant and you can't make me pay either. You cannot make me pay because it says under 1688 that all commitments, it says that I can petition and all commitments from them to force me to pay to make my petition are illegal. So we want to open the courts to all of you to be able to enter the courts for free as you should be allowed to. 
because they've said that you're allowed to at the Waitangi Tribunal, but they've said you're not allowed to in the Anglo courts. And I'm saying, I found this document and I've said, look, my alien status was removed. I'm not alien like you. So many of the people that you're working with, Billy, are all of alien status. Yeah. And that's why yeah. they won't let you use these laws. Because they can't use them. That's so um, what started this conversation was the, the thing I was just trying to um, uh, make sense of that Benjamin had posted. That nothing, like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And um, then I noticed he's an alien. He, he describes himself as an alien. So it makes sense to him. But that's why it doesn't make sense to me. Just quite yes. simply. And I try and read it, but I'm not that stupid. I can kind of comprehend long-winded writing if it's making sense, but when it doesn't make sense, there's, what there's do you, like, you could use all the words in the, under the sun, but bottom line is he's an alien trying to tell me uh, what that he, um, you know, he's doing something, but to me, it's it's not going to work for me. That, that's what I see. It's not going to work for me. That for us, the, the Bill of Rights, nineteen ninety, only because it's just not right for me anyway. It, it, it's not your lineage. No, that's right. And, and, and you should know wondering. that because when it came in, it didn't come in during the time of your lineage. No, I've got no lineage here past even 1850. I might have one great grandfather that came in uh, after 1860, but all of the others, both my parents, were here before 1860, 1865, all of them. Except for that one from Cornwall. The, all, all these people that are coming in, something. yeah, all these people that are coming in, they're working from a different lineage to you. Yeah. And that's why it's not making sense because they're trying to deceive you because you can see here what he said. Um, uh, and I've see, got a funny feeling that even, like, you know, when you say your group or whatever, the people that I've been... Um, with most in the last 16 months know there's something wrong. They may not be able to explain it. They might even go from all different angles at, at trying to remedy this. But what I think it is, is we've got this group of people who have all are all connected genetically in lineage into this land pre-1865. And, and we've all got that in common, and we innately know that there's, that it's just, we're not aliens. But no, you're not. The ones no. that are not with our sort of soul group. I'm just going to go into a bit of a, um, a thing that I've been thinking because you know, I've met a lot of people, and um, like a lot of them might have an alien parent. Or so they're kind of like, like they've got that lineage in Waka Papa, but they also they have that. But they also, and a lot of them aren't even around their um, natural homeland of their lineage. They might be in another part of the country, so it doesn't quite. They don't have that same uh, feeling because your grandparents were there, your great and your great great and your great 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 grandparents were there, and even your great 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 grandparents were there, and it just gives you this kind of feeling that you don't have if you go up a hundred k's up the road. I don't have that same feeling there because I don't have that there. I have it here, but then when I meet um, other people who are in the cause or, 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 you know, fighting this and that, they often have 
are alien parent, an alien parent, and the other Māori parent is from somewhere else, somewhere else. And they're often the people who are, I don't know, they, they, they're often just from observation, it's not a clear cut thing, but they're often the ones that are sort of like down with the Iwi Corp, they're in the United Nations group, they're um, all for the mandates and um, don't really notice the loss of any rights. That is innate in, in people who know that we had something ancestrally and it's gone now. So I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just something it, that it I've noticed. It certainly noted. makes sense. It certainly makes sense. You're working in amongst people that are trying to lead you into their construct and you're, you've got a lineage and it, it's got nothing to do with race. If you look in all those documents, it never ever mentions race. But what it's got all to do with is that the birth certificates were created in 1846. But pre that, the, the, it comes down to the Germanic tribes. The Germanic tribes and their lands were continually invaded, invaded, invaded. And there was a lot of interbreeding going on and people were breeding in and claiming the land through the child. And um, what they did was they brought in the birth certificate to stop that happening. And um, when all that started happening in New Zealand, they brought in the birth certificate, but that's a bit of a long story. But anyway, because the population was so depleted in the 1800s, late 1800s, uh, they brought in a bunch of people to build the country that the Aboriginals were not going to be able to do it. And so they brought in a bunch of people, but um, and they immediately um, they immediately removed their alien status and they made them subjects, but that was so that they couldn't purchase pure title land. That's the reason why it was done. Now, but then what they did, they started New Zealand Fresh. They said, right. All these people that are here together at here in this time now, this time now, they're going to have this, they put this lineage together for us. And it includes all of us. And what they've done for the last 50 years has infused throughout all of us uh, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who are of alien status and not of subject status. Now, not just any subject. There have to be subjects that have got that lineage, the paper of their lineage within New Zealand. So that's the people <coughs> that, so all these people that are with you, um, they come under alien status because if they had, it has to date back on the father's line. And um, um, I, I mean, that's just the way it is, that it dates back to the father's line. And you you should have a, um, you should have a, a great, great, great grandfather that dates back to pre-1865. Mm. But anything after that, they, I think, that they came in as aliens and they were not subjects. But our um, our lineage, it's true. Our lineage rests in that Takara St. George Cross, but not in the Maori. It rests in St. George Cross in the King. Nothing to do with the Maori. The only part that rests with the Maori was this this, see all this section here? All this section here was to do with their trading rights and all of that. But I don't come under that part. That's none of my business. I don't care. But I come under that St. George Cross. They did try to remove, they did try to put up that black bit, and we've already sorted them out because we damn well know, we know sure as hell 
but there was no black fimbriate because it wouldn't have been from the king if it had a black fimbriate. We know that. So then that just knocks down the whole treaty thing and everything. So, but anyway, he, you're dealing with aliens and that I just will show here, Billy, what you sent me. So they're trying to get you in here, but you, you don't, you have way more power than this. And so he's tried to put the, um, he's tried to put, the New Zealand Bora 1990, Section 3, and then he's tried to put that in with the Takara flag, and then he's tried to add Section 4. Do you see how he talks about the syntax? And this is very easy to see, where you put the law that you want at the top, and then you put everything that you want in the middle and then you put the law that you want on the outside and you wrap it up in that like a hamburger like a hamburger just like a hamburger and that you'll see that um he's he's tried to put the king in there and that is just you just simply cannot do it what he's trying to do. And so, and that's why how he's connected you up to all of that. And why has he tried to do that? Because he's an alien. And so he can't function in our subject law. He only can function, he can function in our subject common law. He can only function in here. So he's stolen your flag and tried to wrap you up in here, all right? And so then I'm <laughs> saying to you, that's what God said. God says, get out of her. God says, get out of her. And that's what I'm telling you, get out of her. So that you can see here, where they do a hamburger here, you'll see the hamburger here, where they put Her Majesty, Queen Victoria here, and you'll see that they'll put um, Her Majesty, the Queen of England down here. In every section it is done that you get the hamburger. So that you'll see here of Her Majesty Queen Victoria, and then deemed it necessary for Her Majesty's subjects here, all right? that have come from Europe and Australia and appoint the functionary, which was Hobson to, in her place, to work with the Aborigines in recognition of Her Majesty. So she's wrapped us and you together in here. All right, so she's wrapped us up like a hamburger. And then Her Majesty therefore desirous to establish a form of civil government and then she talks about the laws that she's going to use under him. And then she closes it with Her Majesty again, like a hamburger. Then she oh, comes yeah. here, the chiefs and the confederation of tribes. In this one, she has what you see. This is the article that they're using. You'll see the hamburger here, that you've got the chiefs of the confederation and the separate and the independent chiefs um, who said to Her Majesty, um, the sovereignty, meaning the governance, which they said chiefs and individual chiefs respectfully or even supposed to exercise over this, which they are the sole sovereigns thereof. So there's your hamburger of the chiefs wrapping around her, you see? In this case, they put her in regards to the governance, which is at the top, they've put us in the middle. And so they're saying that they're not involved with that. Well, they can't because they're up there. That's the Aborigines. And then you'll see here, in regards to the lands, that they've put the chiefs as the hamburger. And then you've got down here, where it's talking about the fisheries, 
and all of that, you'll see that is the Queen of England again, to which you'll have your chiefs and the individuals, and you'll have your lands, forestries, fisheries, and then that you will all retain as individuals, but that the chiefs and the yield to her majesty the right of preemption. That just means if they wanna sell it, they can have to sell it through her because she only sells it on in its paper title. So that's what goes on there. And made to alien, and that's when they can sell it through her to the aliens. You see, this is saying that they have to go through her to sell it to the aliens because, ali because they didn't want aliens buying your pure title. So they forced the aliens to go through her. And this is what this whole thing going on around New Zealand is trying to get you focused on your individual territory so that they can get your individual territory out of the queen so that you can have a negotiation with the aliens without the subject status getting in the way. So that's what this is all about. So well, even though- Kate, if you, if you knew the, the nuts and bolts of the piece of our land that's been occupied for the last, or, or just say a uh, couple of years, um, it is, all, it is very pertinent to what you're talking about with paper titles and because they the iwi actually bought the land back with the treaty settlement and then sold it to aliens a, a property developer of the wellington company mm. castle ian castle a wellington yeah. company yeah and then uh now they've done something else and they want to get us out because we are challenging that Maori land up where Fort Balances, where the uh, barracks are and at, at Mahanga Bay, that didn't have a title before 2006. And the title that Niwa has gone under uh, is, um, it was created in 2006 and um, we were challenging the government department to even be able to own the land which was Maori land confiscated to build these barracks on well that it's all earmarked for property development and the iwi want to buy this back off whoever owns it now that it's got these titles on it. They want to buy it back to wrap up the treaty settlement of this particular iwi that say they have mana whenua. Well, they are mana whenua. They were here between 1833 and 1839 when they sold the, the lands to the New Zealand company and made the reserves and all of that stuff um they were only there between 1833 and 1839 and then what's happened is the original owners have come in and said you had no right to sell these lands you had no right i i i i, I can't go there yeah, well, this is and sort of what's what, happening. All I want to do, all I want to do is whoever I'm talking with, it's a whole nother video. Yeah. All I want to do is whoever I'm talking to, I only want to know where your legs are. And if you tell me where your legs are, then I will be able to talk to you, but I cannot, I'm refusing to talk to anybody that yeah. keeps jumping their legs around because I can't deal yeah. with you. If you tell well, you me- see, this is where I'm are, trying to find out, Kate, where my legs are, because I've been quite unsure. I will listen, I'll listen, I'll listen, I'll listen. But there's so many different places that legs are in. My legs are really sitting up here up 
up on my chair right now because I don't uh, even know where my legs go, but I've got the feeling of where my legs need to be. And that's why I'm talking to you. Because I've got a, a feeling that my legs are, are, I know are where, somehow here. I know where the winning legs are for, for well, you said, right? Whatever. That, that, this is where I'm trying to figure it out for myself, where my legs are. So, exactly. So it's not until you know where your legs are that you can come back and say to me, Kate, this yeah. is where my legs are. And when you no. find out where your legs are, you you really cannot work with these aliens whose legs are not in there <laughs> because you're in a different sphere. Yeah. And you can see with what he's done, he's tried to hamburger you in and st he's stealing your legs. Not, maybe not yours, but he's stealing someone's legs. Yeah, yeah. he's stealing my legs because I know where my legs are now. Yeah. He ain't taking them you know me. who you are I and where you're know from. Where I know. The I, thing. I know where my legs are. I know where my seed is. I know what my lineage is. Yeah. And, and I'm working with that. And yeah. I refuse to work with anybody whose legs are not in my legs. Mm. So the first point of call that each one of you need to go down there, I'm going to put this video up. Your first point of call is to find out where your legs are. And when you yeah. figure out where your legs are, and then we've done this video today, and you know where all the legs are, where the, all the legs are coming from, and if you've got your legs mixed up with somebody else's legs, when you've got four legs and six legs instead of two legs, and you only should have two legs. That's all you've got is two, not four. And they've mixed you up in four legs because you've got the 1990 Bill of Rights Act. You've got the Judicial Review Regulation, all right? That's those legs. That all comes under alien and indigenous and aliens. That's those legs. And then you've got your um, Takara flag, you've got your St. George Cross, and you've got your treaty, and you've got your 1908 declaratory judgment, and you've got your 1688, and you've got your 1865, and you've got all of that. That's those legs over there. But if we, we say two legs, then you've got your 1688 and your 1908 as individuals. This one, you need a group. This one is individuals. This is why they're trying to get you into their group because they need a group. They can't get into the court without a group. But I know where I'm standing and I can go to the court by myself and you can all fuck off because that will not you. But then mm. I don't need them because I'm over here. Then you've got the other legs that are coming under some kind of jurisdiction where they're saying, I'm not under those legs, I'm not under those legs, I'm just an entity of nothingness. And they've got no defined territories. And I, I just don't even know about their legs. I don't know. I, I can't deal with it. So um, so if find out where your legs are and then come back and we'll have another conversation about what you can do as an individual for your piece of land that's yours. And that belongs to you. You don't need a group for that. Yeah. It's yours. So it, it, whatever, where, if you want to be in a group, you've got to be in a group with the, with the same legs as you. No point in being in the group with the wrong legs. I mean, you just can't. It's like having chicken feet and cow's feet. It's like having chicken feet put on a cow, the cow's feet put on the chicken. It ain't going to work. Is that? Well, there's something in it, Kate, as to why I'm still there. And that's what there's something in it because it doesn't all sound uh, wrong. And usually, if I'm my legs are somewhere where it just sounds like complete shit, I'm out of there. 
but there are aspects that I'm trying uh, my I, I'm I'm weaving in um, these aspects to it but for me it's not the whole picture and yes it's um it's interesting and I, I really appreciate this because it's so I want to show you one uh, more thing yeah before you go all right so I'll show you one more thing if I can find it one thing I know is anything to do with the 1990s with the United Nations I have it, it doesn't matter if it's human rights or anything that's come out of the United Nations I have got an instinct it's repugnant instinctively I've got to answer this hold on hello Okay. Okay. Fine. Sorry about that, Kate. Yes. All right. So, the order. so another part of your um lineage, your your lineage is made up of many many parts, but these are the parts that you can work within to help you to find your feet and find yourself and or choose not to you can choose whatever you want nobody can choose for you but this is the, the I don't work in their subordinate laws because I do get very lost and so but I'm only just going here to establish my power I want to know I want to know what's my power base all right and so if, if you see here this is called the bills of exchange and this is just talking about the people that when they give you a bill or they give you a law, every law that they give to you in the subordinate is a bill to you. And if you ever are not happy with that law that they've given to you, whether that be a land claim, whether it be the police throwing off your land through their bill to you from the government that you have to follow them, you can use this here, which says, no, all men, remember that document that I showed you that I've got from my, that I that removed my alien status? So then I've taken this to the court and they're trying to make me pay money to get in the court. And I'm saying to you, um, no, all men that I be, that's me, that I'm not part of your alien crappy laws. I come under a different law and mine's under the king who says that if I want a petition, they can't make me have any commitments. That means I don't have to pay as an individual. And so I have protested and I have said um, uh, the demand of payment by them, or the, they've demanded a payment from me to go as an individual to the court. And the bill of exchange here under written, which you have to put, which I demand he made answer Wherefore, I now, in the presence of GH and JK, do protest the said bill of exchange. They gave me a bill. And so what you can do here is you can go to the judge. After that, the court sent me that document and they said, you have to be an organisation. They said, you have to be an organisation. They said, you have to have, it has to be significant for all of the public of New Zealand. And I said, no, 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 I'm not under your crappy alien laws. That might have applied to all your aliens. But I said to them, but I said to them, oh, no, no, no. I used that document where I said the no ye all men. So then I just went to the court. And I just said to them, I said, oh, no, that it is my right to go to petition the king and the majesty and all commitments and prosecutions are illegal. I mean, they can't charge me. The Declaratory Judgment Act says if I have even a question 
even a question about a law that they've made about my land or my property, I'm permitted to go to the court as an individual and say to them, and I've said to them, so I've attached on, here is my right over here. So I've attached that on. And then I've attached here on, there's my name down there. Then I've attached on this, the bill of exchange, where I've said that I do protest the bill that they've given to me because I wanted to petition the court about a law that I disagree with, which is section 5KII, that New Zealand will be bound to any international instrument. I said, I, I'm not going to be bound to your alien laws and I reject what you've said. They said, well, you've got to pay $10,000 if you want to come back in and reject that. And I said, so I said to the court, and I'm waiting for their answer, I have said, I, Catherine Sixtus, that's my name, I, Catherine Sixtus, do declare that I am faithful and bear allegiance to the Majesties. Know all men that I, Catherine Sixtus, do protest the said bill of exchange by the court registrar, J.C. McGrath, Mark Denny, and all fees pertaining to my subject right to petition for a declaration is protected by the king. And so I'm saying you can't stop me. And I can do that as the all and singular person under the Declaratory Judgment Act as well. It's up there somewhere. And then I've listed where my name is as a subject. And I've announced to them, I'm not an alien. So stop putting me into your alien laws because I am not in your alien laws. My feet are not there. You're putting chicken feet onto a cow and I want my cow's feet back. So I've demanded that to the court and now we're waiting for the court to see what the court will answer. So um, that's what you need to do, Billy, my friend, is go and sort out where your feet are. I think I need to go and uh, have a little rest and let that sink in. But I think you do. It's you, all you, making you. sense, Kate, what you've been what you've been saying. It's making sense to me. It makes sense to me. It, it doesn't matter where your feet oh, are. Okay. You can't combine the feet. You can't put two chicken feet on a cow and two cow's feet on the chicken and then say that the cow is all the same feet. It, you, you just simply cannot do it. So as long as you know where your feet are, then that's where you function. Just keep thinking about the chicken and the cow. Stop saying chicken. My dog keeps buying chicken. She's saying chicken. Well, it could be the dog's, well, I don't know, dog's feet and cat's feet are fairly similar, but I mean, yeah, I don't know, but it really doesn't matter where, where, where you are. Each one, each one has got advantages. And yeah. because they've given the Maori the opportunity to choose themselves as alien or subjects because they cannot force you. It's up to you to decide where is the best advantage to you in the alien status or in the subject status. I'm going to let you decide that. You might decide if you come under alien, then you come under all the refugees' rights and you're entitled to houses, you're entitled to special monies, you're entitled to certain things under that. If you come under your subject status, you are entitled to a different set of things. It depends. You, um, Anybody can choose if they want to have alien status or subject status. I choose subject status because yeah. for me, that gives me the power that I need to do what I want to do. But you may choose alien status because that might give you more power to do what it is that you want to do. But all I'm saying to you is that you have to choose one of those that you're not going to be able to have one leg in each because you're always going to get knocked down whichever way you go because they don't fit together. They just simply don't. Yeah. You can't make an apple into a banana. You simply cannot do it. And that's what a lot of people in New Zealand are trying to do. 
They want to have one foot in each, and I don't think it's possible in my opinion. So that's, I'm going to turn off this video. Yeah. A smile for the camera. A smile. Hang on. Well, I stop the video. Hang on. Is, is my face look good with my glass? What do you think? Glasses or no glasses? Oh, um, just like that spy. Oh, glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. I look more clever, don't I? All right. All right. I smile for the camera. Hang on. Oh, it's right. like that. Hopefully. Okay, cut. <laughs>